Can everyone hear me? Now, today's picnic, right? It's a picnic. We're all three men and women. Nick has been hammered by the Premier. And he's going to be very careful what he does and says today. He's free to talk to the media. There's no gagging on that. The media still have the rights, luckily, at this point. The rest of us, the four speakers that were intending to talk, we still have the right to talk uh, about our individual topics. But please, the idea of today is to show the Premier uh, that he really misunderstood the whole concept of this uh, memorial that was meant to happen. It's a gathering of Australians to be able to talk about stupidity of violence. But 10 years ago, it was a perfect storm that was the fault of just the people that came to Cronulla. It was the fault of the media, radio stations, telecommunication. It was a time where things happened that have never happened before. I think we've all learnt the negative side of the Cronulla riots. But more importantly, we need to be able to talk about the riots and the reasons why they happened. And we can't be stopped from analysing and debating the stupidity of what our government has snuck in with multiculturalism and the damage that it's done. So we're all here to talk and chat and have a great day, prove to everyone that Australians can still have a picnic and there's no intentions of violence or inciting any form of uh, negative energy to anyone. Yeah? But we're proud to fly the flag. It's still not against the law to do so although there are many people that would like to, to prevent us from having the flag. And uh, I guess all we can do now is have a great time. And because we don't technically have any time restrictions anymore, the council actually has done us a favor because before we were going to be restricted to two hours and then we had to go. Now we've got all day. We've got enough time to cook pork and pig. <laughs> Although we've got already pre-cooked meat, so you don't have to wait and starve. We've got stuff. Uh, and we're just going to have a good day. So, and media, water over there, if you're, you're thirsty, and we're just going to enjoy ourselves. Oh, we all yeah. 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 It's been a lot of, I would say, you would say there's been a lot of misconception about what today is about. Can you spell it out for us? Why exactly you're doing this? For me, and for the last six years, it's always been about freedom of expression. That we as Australians have to learn that violence is unacceptable for stop. But there should be no limits to expression. Sorry. And somewhere along the line, and I really do blame Bob Brown for this, he introduced a, a, a style of thinking in the 80s that if someone didn't like something, bag them out personally. Instead of talk, talking about the topic, attack the individual. And so really in the last 30 years, we've lost the ability of civil conversation without abuse. I painted Say No to Burkers in 2010 to defend a gay friend of mine. That's on public record. But from that point, the lefties, the Greens, and some Muslims, and the, the times I've been put in hospital by Muslims, have taken offence that I have an opinion other than them about full face coverings. Now, I don't deserve to be a victim of crime, and no one does. And the poor, innocent people that were abused 10 years ago, it should never happen. But then again, the day after when the, the other members of the community came in from out west, what they did was even worse because they had the intention to stab and hurt people. We're going to stop. We're going to be able to talk as adults that violence is not suitable and we need to work that out first. It doesn't matter what the topic is, what the gathering is. Oh, sorry about my, it's my Italian sort of background. I wave my hands. Uh, that's. I guess the crux of what we have to re-educate ourselves as Australians. Zero tolerance to violence. Like even now, you know, we talk about violence towards women. That's true, but we should be talking about no violence to children, men, women, everyone. We're, we're always doing damage control and not getting to the core of the problems. But doesn't celebrating the Cronulla riots essentially celebrate violence? There are a hell of a lot of people hurt that day. You're out of, out that, out of, that, no, no, no. That's, that's the difference. It's like, if this didn't happen, and there definitely could have been a language change in the way it was sold. Okay? But if this didn't happen, this conversation wouldn't be happening with you and I. And that's the reality. You have to get the carrot to get 
the conversation going. And hopefully what will come out today is you'll see that everyone here is not the dregs of society as certain people would like to make out. There's a lot of educated people here and there's lots of mum and dads and, and just cross sections of Australia. And, and answering your question, no one's celebrating the violence of Cronulla. So are you, are you unhappy then that some people were bashed on that day? I, I'm unhappy when anyone's assaulted. I'm unhappy that... Because uh, people were assaulted that weren't Muslim. Mm -hmm. It was just stupid. So it's okay to be assaulted if you're a Muslim, but not if you're no. another... No, 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 you're, you're, you're putting words in my mouth. Mm -hmm. No, the answer is no. No one should be assaulted. The people who were assaulted day one who were Muslim and non-Muslim, mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to say yeah. to you, and the people who were non-Muslim and Australian or whatever, is inappropriate the following day. And that, that's the thing, tit and tat, violence doesn't work. But the media and the politicians created the perfect storm 10 years ago. And I'm not going to blame the media 100% because it was, everyone has the responsibility to see. Like, for example, I was asked the question, like you said now about, are we taking responsibility in violence and everything? Well, the reality is if there's a concert that's happening every day almost, and children die because they take drugs. Are the people that organise the concert responsible for the death? Well, if we take that attitude, we'll never do anything. We've got to be able to get to the point, no matter what the gathering is, that no violence even creeps into anyone's mind. Sergio, what's, what's your idea of a multicultural Australia? I stand against multicultural. I, so explain see, that. The, see, the difference is I know what multiculturalism means and I know you don't. Because I've studied multiculturalism as what it was, as an, as what it is as an ideology. My Australia that I grew up as a young person, someone turn that off, was a integration and assimilation. Multiculturalism was stuck in and creeped into the Australian political scene starting from the 70s and manifested in the 80s by a socialist concept. Multiculturalism is what it means. It doesn't mean kumbaya, we all get together and share our recipes. It actually means the encouragement of separate cultural groups and keeping their identity. Can't the definitions of, of things change over time? No. no. Clearly that's not how multiculturalism no. is seen today. No. That's and that's not, the problem. It's, that, that's not how it's seen by the general population. But, that's and because, if that's the that's case, because then the why would you be saying that multiculturalism doesn't work? Because if it did work by your definition... Because, no, because people aren't, at this point, voting about that situation. The same as the carbon tax. It's a great example. The carbon tax was snuck into the population. If no one bothered to reverse it, it would still be. Multiculturalism was snuck in, it needs to be reversed. I believe in multiracial Australia. It doesn't matter what you look like or where you come from. We are all from somewhere. And even our, our anthem says that. We are many, but we are one. Multiculturalism doesn't represent that. It allows fundamentalism of culture. Now, and, and I'm answering this. When people say, how do we prevent our youth from being radicalised? That could be any group. I'm suggesting that it's easier to reverse multiculturalism and re-address those issues and help the young people feel like they're part of something rather than a small part of their community. But how is this today making, say, Muslim people feel like they're part of something? The segregation started in the 80s with that group of people. It's not now. We aren't doing it. The Australian public are not alienating or persecuting Muslims in Australia. This started in the 80s, and I know because in my 20s I was on board member of the Sydney Youth Festival. There's a whole lot of history and information we had then. It started then and it's kept on growing. It's no use people saying we have a problem and no one wants to fix it. I'm suggesting one way of fixing it is give them the opportunity of becoming Australians without ghettos being created. Right, so you're, so, okay. so you're, you're against, multiculturalism for you is different groups of people sticking together within Australia. That's right. right. Yeah, so but you're, you're okay through? with integration. No, no, no. Do you just my mother, no, my mother, then... my mother is Romanian, my dad right. is Italian background, I'm Australian and my child has a little bit more than five separate bloodlines. Right, I'm that sorry. Must be really confusing when she's hanging out with a friend. And she's no, no, no. There's nothing confusing about it. My two boys are Australian. Their bloodlines and their history is their history. If they want to learn about it, they can. But there is nothing wrong with being just an Australian. It, it, that shouldn't be a dirty word. 
being Australian or be proud of the flag. So Joe, in short, you're saying the 2005 Cronulla riots were the riots we had to have? Unfortunately, we needed to have them because everyone made a mistake. It wasn't just the 5,000 uh, men and women that were on the ground. It was the media, the radio stations, the sensationalism, uh, the, the anger that no one knew how to express. Uh, so the problem there is that it wasn't 2005 that started it. The problem started five years prior and no one wanted to discuss it. Sure, but all hell broke loose in December of 2005 and you are saying we needed to have that to bring this to a head. Oh, I wish it never happened. But you said we needed to have it. It was unfortunately a really bad event that happened and we need to make the best of a stupid event. I'm not agreeing with it at all. I could say I wish it never happened. But if it didn't happen then, it would have happened sometime. It may have happened after the Lint bombing, uh, you know, terrorist attack, or the Lint event, even if it wasn't terrorist and it was a mental illness, it could have been the trigger. It could have been the Muslim rights in the city that could have been the trigger. The good thing is that since 2005, when the Muslim rights happened, say, in Sydney, there was no response. There wasn't a counter rally. So people grew up, Australians grew up from that point of view. And Sergio, uh, are people of a multicultural background welcome here at your barbecue today? Yes. I'm multi well, I'm multiracial. So it comes down to like your definition again of multicultural. Like one of the I'll, I'll ask you that again. Yes, I'll, yes. There are Lebanese here. And you like to point Danny, out? Yeah, yeah, point hey, anyone here who's Lebanese? Can they put their hand up? Anyone? Oh, I'm Aboriginal, if that helps. Yeah, okay, Ralph. <laughs> Danny, Danny's one of the speakers. He's uh, a refugee from Pakistan. It's not Lebanese. No, no, sorry, but sorry, you asked this thing about the concept of multiculturalism. What a Pakistani heritage isn't uh, multi. No, 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 sure he's not. But the question was asked: someone Lebanese background? You said yeah. There's someone. Well, I was. We well, I was told that there were meant to be yesterday. Before. And didn't you want them segregated anyway by your definition of multiculturalism? No, you're putting words in my mouth again. Okay. No, multiculturalism to me is the problem in solving fundamental issues that we have in Australia. If we if we prevent people from separation and segregation and going down a path of brainwashing, right? And I'm just gonna say it clearly. If the Italians and the Greeks that came to Australia believed that they were better than everyone else and they stayed in Leichhardt and they didn't marry into anyone else, there would be a problem there too. But every other uh, racial group in Australia of our history, even let's say the last war-torn group from Asia being the Vietnamese, they're all Australians. You know, they, they have Asian complexions, yeah, but they're Australians. I don't see, I don't look at someone's face. I look at them and they're, and they're walking in Australia, they're, they're dressed as how we are, they speak in our language. The ones that are born here, of course, and have that opportunity. That's, that's all I see. And that's what you'll find that most of the people here, and most of these young people here, weren't old enough to be in the right. Right? They're, just, they're just another generation and it's our job as adults to make sure to show them that none of their adults, you know, I'll class, classify myself as an oldie, are not preaching anything violent. And we try to educate them in processes of conversation and showing them that you can gather as Australians peacefully. If there's, if there's no leadership from the ground, you can't trust the politicians because they're just saving their own seats. You know, they'll sell us out to keep their, their, their position in power. What's your last name, Sergio? Redigali, good Aussie name. Can we spell it? R-E-D-E-G-A-L-L-I. -L -L and growing up, when anyone asked me where I came from, I'd say Carlingford. And that was my response as a young Australian. You know, I just didn't play into the, those games. Thank you. Very Thanks, uh, Sergio. Appreciate that. Good to clarify.
Tune in tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye for now.